I started YouTube not long ago, and we all know how important is consistency when posting in any of these platforms. Back when I started, it was overwhelming the amount of work that it took to just put one video out on YouTube. I needed to find an idea, write the script, film the video, edit the video, and then publish it and promote it. I wanted to post regularly every Tuesday, and I will find myself every Monday stressed out, not knowing what I was going to post the next day, trying to research video ideas, trying to film them as fast as possible, edit them as fast as possible, and I will end up just settling for a good enough video. And my stress levels were up to the roof. But now I'm able to create two videos per week and I almost never get stressed. I just have to follow my plan and I know that everything is going to be fine. So how did I do it? Well, two things mainly. First, joining the Part-Time YouTuber Academy course by Ali Abdal. And the second one, creating a system that makes creating content so streamlined. So let me walk you through the system that makes creating content stress-free. Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Daniel, founder of the Notion Academy. And on this channel, we use Notion and other tools and strategies to free up our time and gain control of our lives. Well, if you have been following this channel, you already know that for me, creating systems for something that I do repeatedly, it's a must for every action. But before I show you this system, let me tell you another reason why I've been able to do this. And this is joining the Part-Time YouTuber Academy by Ali Abdal. This course has changed completely the way that I approach YouTube. And I'm sure that if you go to my YouTube page, you can certainly see when I started the course. In that course, I learned about how to systemize content production, the gear needed to start a channel, how to structure information within the videos, about storytelling, how to never run out of ideas for my videos. And best of all, an awesome and supporting community that gave me feedback to all my videos and that really has helped me to grow even faster. So just yesterday, they just opened the registration for cohort two. So if you want to take YouTube seriously and treat it as a business, I highly recommend that you join them. I know that the price is high, but you can think of it as a way of accountability to really make you take YouTube seriously and really as a business. And I'm sure that in the future, you will be able to earn that money back as I have already done since I finished the course. So if you want to join, you can find the link for the course in the description of this video. But now let's start with the content creation system. By the way, you will also be able to find the link to this template in the description of the video. So I have separated this system into three differentiated parts. The first one is the content production pipeline. The second one are the calendars, where we are going to be able to see all the production calendar and the subtasks. And the third one are the supporting assets, which are not a core part of the system, but that will certainly help me along the way. So let's start with the content production pipeline. In this step of the process is where we are going to take our videos from idea phase to being published on YouTube. So the first step of this one is the idea bucket. So in this first part, as you can see, I have created a link database to my YouTube videos database in which I am just showing the name property, whether it's related to Notion or not the video, but this is, this is personal, the focus of the video and the type. So now whenever I have a new idea for a video, I will come here, write it down. It doesn't matter the title, it's just the idea, for example, video about tam taming dogs using Notion. So this will be a Notion related video. The focus of this video, another thing that I learned from Part-Time YouTuber Academy is that there is three types of videos, discoverable, which are more focused on search and SEO, community, which are videos focused for your current subscribers. So they, these videos will not get you new subscribers, but they will create friendships within your existing community. And sales, videos in which uh, you want to sell something or focus on pro uh, promoting any product or something. So in this case, this is gonna be a discoverable video. And the type is gonna be a full video. I like to separate between full videos and shorts because shorts are much quicker to make and I can use them to fill any hole in my content production schedule. So this is gonna be a full video and that's it. And this is going to be filtered out because I'm using in the filter that the type is empty. So whenever this type gets filled in, the video is going to disappear and go to my 
y videos database. So after we have entered our new video idea, the video is going to appear in the next step of this process, which is the clickbaity silo. Here, if we open it up, we can see that our video about taming dogs using Notion is already here. So now this next part of the process is simply to force me to research the title and the thumbnail of the video before I spend any time into creating it. And why I do that? Well, creating videos is a big time investment. So I wanna make sure that whenever I'm spending all that time into one, that the chances of the video of performing well are as high as possible. So during this research, I can understand whether there are other videos on YouTube already that are performing quite well. So this is going to tell me that this topic is worth making a video for and add my own take to it. So which is a very good way to know this. Whenever you are searching about your video topic idea and you see that the ratio views versus subscribers of one of the videos is disproportionate. So this means that, that the views counts is much higher than the subscriber count, then this means that this video is being searched a lot and is worth targeting. So in order to do that, I will move this to title and thumbnail status and open it. Here I have a video template and it's going to create all of this that I'm going to explain later. But here we can use it for brainstorming title ideas and then check on YouTube which one makes sense and which one doesn't. And finally, go up here and title the video according to the research that we just done. And here we can put how the thumbnail is going to look like. So that is it. I have the title and the thumbnail idea, so I can go back. And now I can pass this video to the next step, which is to research the content itself. As a byproduct of this part of the process, I'm also able to interiorize much more the videos that I'm actively working on. So in my normal life, I can even come up with ideas because I know that that video is waiting for me. So now I know that I have a video about taming dogs. So whenever I get a new idea about this topic in particular, I will just come here and brain dump all the information in that page that I just show you. And like this, it's gonna be much easier for me to start scripting the video because I can take all those ideas. And this brings me to the next step of the process, which is the calendar room. So the purpose of this step is mainly to schedule the publish date for each of the videos that are ready to start researching and scripting. So in this case, we can see that I can just see the how I tame my dog in 25 days, in 21 days, sorry, in Notion, because it's the only video that has gone through the whole process. So now scheduling is going to be as easy as dragging from this to the other side, and that is it. It has disappeared from here, and now it just appears here. And we can see how the release date is already put to the 28th of January. I try to schedule my videos one time every month, so every end of the month, I'm going to schedule the whole next month of videos. And I do that through my weekly review. But I come here because this view is super useful for that matter. So what happens if I want to schedule for my whole month, let's say the next month, and I don't have enough videos from here. So I will have to go back and do the proper research to all the video ideas that I have to know if they are worth doing. And once I have enough videos, I will be able to fill my whole next month. The next step of this, because remember we are scheduling our videos, is to come to the video itself. And here, that I didn't explain before, these are all the subtasks that this video is going to have. So for me is to research the title, to do the script, to film the video, to edit the video, to do the thumbnail and edit it, and to publish. So what I'm going to do is take all of this and drag it into here. And I'm gonna explain you what just happened. Here, I have my YouTube videos database linked to my tasks database. In this task database, I have all my tasks, not just YouTube related. So what I'm doing when I drag them here is they're appearing here as subtasks, because remember, we are in the YouTube videos database. And also by this filter, I'm also assigning their status as not started. 
and also I'm relating it to two of my outcomes and relating it automatically to the current video that we are in. This is done via a self-referencing filter within the video template. If you have any doubt on how to set it up, write me in the comments below and I will be glad to explain it to you. So now I can schedule also these subtasks. So let's say that for releasing the video on January 28th, I need to script the video at least on Friday, on Friday 22. And I would like to film the video on Saturday 23. I will send the video to my editor probably on, on that same 23. The thumbnail, I think I can, I can do also on Sunday 23. I can do all in the same day. And then I'm gonna publish the video on the 28th. Like this, I'm giving myself some buffer. And this is how I tame my dog title is already done. So that is it. So now when each day comes in my focus page, which is a page that I have created for the tasks that I need to get done today, I will be also able to see all the subtasks that are YouTube related. But more on this on the next step. Let's go back to the content machine. And the, now that everything is scheduled for that video, we can go to the video factory. So this is where the scheduled videos come from infancy to maturity and then to being published. So as I said before, once everything is scheduled, I just have to go to that focus page and do each of the subtasks. Whenever I finish each of them, I will come here and change the status of the video. So if I finish the research, the next step is that the video is ready for scripting. If I do the scripting, this means that the video is ready to be filmed. The next step is to edit the video when I finish filming. And the next step is when the video is already ready to publish and I just have to publish it on YouTube. And once the video is published, I will just move it over here. So as you see, I have laid all the path. So it's so easy for me to just follow this process and know that I will be able to publish the video in the date that I have set. So now the last part of the process is the wall of fame. And this, as you can tell, is just all the videos that I have published. So the only purpose of this last step is just to admire what I have created and also to boost my ego. The only thing left to do will be to input the YouTube URL over here. And once I have done so, here is a very easy way for me to come to any of my past videos by just clicking here. I will go to the video. So now the second part of this system is the calendars. I basically use this view to refresh what is the content that is coming in the future. So in the first view, what I'm able to see is basically my content calendar with all the YouTube videos that I'm going to publish and which type of video they are. And the other one is all the subtasks of the videos themselves. So this is basically my tasks database in which I'm filtering all the videos that the YouTube relation is not empty. So this means there are tasks that are related to my YouTube videos and that the status is not done. So and another thing that I'm also showing here is when the release date of the YouTube video is. I'm doing this via a rollup because now that this task database is related to my YouTube database via rollup I can get the release date and I'm putting it in this way using a formula that is just appending this string release with the YouTube release date. So like this, I can have a very good overview of when each of the tasks are really due. So now let's close this view. And let's speak about the last part of this system, which is the supporting assets. So this is a very personal part of the system, but I use it so far to put everything that can support my video creation process. So in this case, I have put here a list of B-roll shots that I may do in the future to increase the production value of my videos. This was suggested by one of the Portland YouTuber Academy's alumni. Her name is Katrin, and she shared this, this with us and I found it very useful. So someday I'm gonna be doing all this B-roll. The next one is the conclusions that I'm getting from the analytics reading that I do from my channel. So here, I'm sorry, it's in Spanish, but I write everything that is working analytics-wise so I can do more testing and probably increase the, the number of views of my videos. So here, as an as a extra information, 
I can tell the thumbnails with my facial expression and showing a part of the Notion system is really working for the click-through rate. And also when I number the steps within the title, the retention rate in the video is also being higher. So this is something that I'm gonna keep testing. And then finally, the useful pages. So I use this more thinking about the mobile experience because I can favorite any of these pages and then going from my cell phone to them is very easy because they will be on the sidebar. So for example, this researching vids view is just going to tell me all the videos that are in researching phase. So whenever I get a, an idea about a video, as I said before, if I get an idea about the taming dog video, from my cell phone even, I can fastly go to this page and input this idea over here. I don't have to search through all the different views and all the different videos. And the same for adding a new video. If I'm on the go and I have a new video idea, I would just go to this page and input the new video idea. But this is exactly a copy of the link databases that we saw before. And finally, I have here a page that within the Part-Time YouTuber Academy, uh, we call it Cold Mines. So these are links to other creators' YouTube channels or Twitters that they may act as an inspiration for your own content. And this is one of the ways to never run out of ideas. So in my Cold Mines, for example, I have all these Notion YouTubers that can really help me to spark new ideas for new content that I may create. Well, as you can already tell, this system has lifted a weight off of my shoulders as you cannot imagine. So if you are interested in also having a system like this for you, you can find the link of this template in the description down below. So feel free to grab yours and start to feel more relaxed toward your content creation. By the way, this systematic approach don't just apply to YouTube, this applies to any content creation. You can extrapolate this idea to a newsletter, to a blog, to Instagram post, to LinkedIn post, practically to anything. So that is it for this video. I hope you find it very useful and hasta la próxima.